Hello friends, it is not really a snow day, but it is a cold day. It's so frigid outside that it's not safe for us to be outside. But that doesn't mean that we can't find some ways to worship, to gather around and reflect on who God is, on what God is doing in our community. So we will not have capital worship as normal, but you will still have an opportunity here to have a few minutes of reflection on the scriptures assigned for this week. So with that in mind, let me read to you the gospel selection that we had for today. It comes from the Gospel of Luke, the third gospel in the New Testament, chapter 4, that starts in verse 14 and goes through verse 21. And it says, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and good news spread about him throughout the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. Now Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been raised, and on the Sabbath he went to the synagogue as he normally did, and he stood up to read. The synagogue assistant gave him the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the synagogue assistant, and sat down. Every eye in the synagogue was fixed on him, and he began to explain to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled just as you heard it. Think for a minute, imagine, if you will, the places where each of you grew up. What feelings come to mind? I imagine it's not all the same for us. For some, it might be fond memories, friendly recollections that fill your mind's eye. But for others, perhaps there is pain or sadness that stings the heart. Home is the place that affected us so deeply, no matter whether it was good or bad, or probably some combination of both, in ways so complex that for the most of us, there's a tense relationship with home. My home is a weird, wonderful place called Wayne County, Ohio. You see, that place is full of more dairy cows than human beings. I grew up in a little town called Orville, a train town turned world headquarters of Smuckers Corporation, the main production facility for Ruggles Ice Cream, and the hometown of Bobby Knight. Strange. What a recollection of collision and strange identities, right? It's the place where I first fell in love. It's the place my first heartbreak happened. It's the place where I made all sorts of mistakes, some of which still shame me to this day. It's the place where I first witnessed the tragedy of addiction and visited upon my own family. It's the place full of memory, sometimes as dreams, and sometimes as nightmares. When Jesus goes to Galilee, when Jesus goes to Nazareth, the place where he grew up, to begin this prophetic ministry, he goes to a complicated place called home. And then... In the midst of that murky social estuary, he proclaims that the Spirit of the Lord is upon him because the Spirit has anointed him, that God has anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is good news, but it's also difficult news. Difficult not because people don't want this. Difficult because of this being Jesus, this normal, everyday kid that just grew up here, all of a sudden declaring significance, declaring power beyond comprehension. Have you ever gone home and shared news with the potential to rapture or enrage your hearers? Now, 
Don't get me wrong. I don't mean declaring that you are the fulfillment of Israel's far-off prophecies and God's ancient promises. I certainly don't have that high a view of myself. But Jesus goes to a place where he certainly knew the players at hand. Let me tell you, when I go home and act in ways that people don't expect, people get all sorts of uncomfortable. In this space, in the midst of that discomfort, that is where Jesus deigns the right place to announce the nearness of God. To these complicated people, closest to his identity and formation, that is where Jesus' coming out party happens. The fulfillment begins in the midst of that complicated place called home. Just before this, remember that Jesus was far away, baptized in the Jordan River near the Dead Sea. Jesus followed the Spirit into the wilderness for temptation before he eventually lands in Jerusalem, way down south, far south of Nazareth in Galilee. In other words, Jesus could have easily begun his ministry in the center of religious life, in the very central center of social interaction of the region, among the politically powerful, among the elite class, with a huge audience to hear the message of God's reign come near. For some reason, though, Jesus returns home to start a movement that will change the entire world. What the Bible tells us is that Jesus specifically followed the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to Galilee and entered that synagogue on Sabbath because, well, it was his custom. It was what he did every day. Just as the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness for temptation, an extraordinary occasion, so too the Spirit leads Jesus into Galilee to begin his mystery, ministry in the very ordinary customs of his hometown. The gospel is good news for our homes, even if it is difficult news for our homes to hear. The gospel is good news for our homes, even if it calls out the xenophobia that we find in the police department when the marginalization of the LGBTQIA community that we find in our churches, in the oppression of the poor through City Hall, and the dehumanization, dehumanization of prisoners that we find in our own families, because the gospel remembers that our liberation, mine and yours, is tied up with the liberation of migrants, of people of color, of our LGBTQIA siblings, of people facing food and housing and financial insecurity of those in jail. Our liberation is tied up with the liberation of everyone. So if the reign of God isn't fulfilled in our homes, then it cannot reach the ends of the earth. Jesus went home because God was there calling him to something powerfully and wonderfully new in a place that felt very familiar. Jesus went home because in divine fullness, he loved his home, even if he didn't like everything about it. After all, the gospel isn't an affirmation of everything that we are or do right now. Instead, is it an affirmation of everything that we are and everything that we do in God. Everything that we are that is not of God has to go. That begins with us, and it begins also in our homes. In us and in our loved ones and in our rivals. Jesus goes home not to stay home, but following the spirit of the living God to catalyze a movement of radically new and extravagantly abundant life for all people. From the closest family to the bitterest rival to every person we encounter in between, Jesus is bringing an announcement of good news, of liberation, of restoration. That begins in his home. And because Jesus is with us now, through that same spirit that carried him to the wilderness and to Galilee, and now into our hearts and our homes. So too Jesus is in the home of every faraway place that seems foreign to us, but is home to others. And so everywhere, in every home, the scripture is fulfilled today and every day for us all. I hope you enjoy some time at home today, Cat Fam. And if you are listening on the outside of Capitol, I imagine you're probably shut down today too with the weather because it looks like most of the Northeast and Midwest is buckling down for all of this cold. So friends, I hope you stay safe and you stay warm and you stay comfortable. But I also hope that you see this challenge that Jesus places before us, that home is a place that is hard sometimes 
but also a place that God seeks to transform. Blessings to you. Get some rest and enjoy it if you can. Take care.